What's good? What's going on, man? We are one. We got, you got yo, me putting on cocoa butter. Cactus. You got me putting on cocoa butter on my skin and things. Yo, let's get it, man. Fucking, we got a flamethrower, a missile launcher. Yo, I had all these names for you. Executioner, assassin, <laughs> Jason Bourne as Navy SEAL, Delta Force, <laughs> Vortex, <laughs> Teleport. What the fuck? Yo. Juggernaut. Hey, man, I'm so rocks. honored. I'm so honored. Shout out to everyone out here showing love. Big Red been showing mad love. Illa G always show love. JR Swift, mad love. I appreciate you, man. Yo, salute, man. I'm, I'm, you're a fucking, you're not from this planet, man. We're going to talk about <laughs> this shit. We got to find out where you were really born. Where I was really born. <laughs> yo, I'm, I'm excited, man. This is going to be a fun one. Couple girls, uh, yo, Queen Heroin, Juggernauts, Boogie Down BX. We got a couple ground rules before we get started. If you got Indeed. questions, please use the questions feature. That way I can pull them up um, if they make sense. Sometimes they don't make sense, so we won't pull them up. Also, just like on the page, if you get on any fuck shit, I will send your ass home. So that is what it is, man. Episode 85 of the Karen and Culture Show. And we are fucking amped right now. We so, excited. How you doing? You all right? Man, the multitask is real. I'm doing really, really well. I'm so happy to be here. Yo, you got me hype every day to build up. I'm like, let's go. Let's, let's, let's go. get it. So, <laughs> yo, so a um, couple things, man. It's like weird. I'm familiar. We're not familiar, but familiar. It's like I, I heard heard you on the debut. Then I heard you on um, the Indelible MC show. Then I heard you in the Prince Paul joint. And then I didn't hear nothing for a minute. And I wasn't piecing it all together. I wasn't piecing the family relationships. I was just like, yo, who the fuck was that? Like, it was just always right. like, and, and so I'm hoping that you can help um, fill in the gaps because I got, Indeed. you know, because it's, it's, it's spotty for me. So, um, but first I want to start with your Bronx experience. Because, I mean, I'm from Connecticut. The only thing I know about the Bronx as far as just being there is Co-op City and Fordham Road. So Okay. What, well, yeah. What, what's, your, what's, City. <laughs> what's your experience like? Yeah, I mean, um, shout out to DJ Boo, Juggernaut right there. Shout out to my sister E. We got some stuff coming, too, on this new project. Um, in regards to the Bronx experience, so, um, I mean, that to me was the foundation. Um Growing up, uh, you know, Slick Rick, all of that, like literally in the X, um, when I had my daughter, you know, 16 years ago now, um, we lived around there for a little bit. Um, that's home. Um, but honestly, when I was really young, we moved to New Rochelle. So now Rule was like, is like the other half. So for me, when you say Connecticut, that's like fam too. I, I have an aunt in... Um, uh, where is it? Not New Haven. Um, Bridgeport, Norwalk. Near, near Bridgeport, near Bridgeport. Yeah. So mm. it's like when you think about Connecticut, it's like New Row, Westchester. Then you think Connecticut. You know what I'm saying? So really, that ain't that. We cousins too. You know oh, what no, I mean? It's right down 95. I mean, I was I was in, I'm from New Haven, so it was like an hour and 15 minute train ride. So my 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 years in, in high school were spent there <laughs> climbing in the windows. Four That's in the morning back saying. home. So yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, okay, juggernauts in the building for sure. Yeah. You know, but um, but yeah, I see Illa G too with the heroin question. That was actually the original spelling, um, that heroin. And so it switched up to heroin, uh, spelt the way it is currently. But um, but yeah, I mean the foundation was the ex um having brothers who were older than me, you know, um Slim who's in the building right now. DJing and, and rhyming himself. I mean, it, you couldn't help but be exposed to that. I think it was just more so a matter of time before I followed suit because not only was it in the environment when you stepped out the door, but it was in the environment when you went back in and you closed the door. You know what I mean? Hearing, hearing Kev with the beat production, um, Breeze, you know, rhyming and seeing him in the studio, um, seeing the notebooks around the crib. So, Definitely the Bronx played a major role and foundation in the fabric of who I am, who we were, um, just family, environment, neighborhood, um, and just hip hop. I mean, that's where the lifestyle part comes from. That's what we lived. And so when we made that transition and came to New Rochelle, came to Nauru, which, you know, both of my brothers are still in the X, um, 
but that was a part of it too because then you got Nubian so it's like you know there's still that foundation there too and literally the joke is people be like oh you live upstate like New Rochelle is literally like 10 minutes yeah. from where we grew up you know what I mean White yeah. Plains Road Gun Hill all of that like Edenwald it's like 10 minutes yeah so, New Yorkers have a weird sense of um time and space man it's like you you in Jersey you, it's like you might as well be like on the fucking moon like Long, <laughs> Long Island doesn't right. count either I get it, you know what I'm saying? Connecticut, yo, we that's really Canada. I mean, so I Exactly. I, <laughs> you say I, Canada. It exactly. Is. Exactly. But it depends on where you're at. Cause again, sure. you could be in Stanford in 10, 10, 15, maybe more like 15, 20 from here, but it's yeah. all neighborhood. But that foundation was definitely there when you just think about hip hop, what it was, hearing hearing it, seeing it, feeling it. Like it was more than just the music. It was literally the grit the seeing stuff tagged up the train the two train like as a kid and then even older you know what i mean coming back when i was after college and being there so it's, it's just a feel man and i think at the end of the day that goes beyond the bronx that goes beyond the x that's just hip-hop in general you know it's a certain feel it's a certain texture that you just either you understand or you don't you know what i'm saying right of course and obviously you know you talked about in other interviews even just now like your brother's you know the influence obviously doing music in the crib but was there were there other other influences as far as like even the, the ladies were you like oh i'm gonna hold it down for the ladies as far as like seeing light or like or was it oh most definitely was it, what was that like about most definitely i mean i've told the story about listening to this this split relationship between bob ross right before B video music box came on and watching that after school and um for me light um, you know, was a major influence. Paper Thin was one of my favorite songs growing up. I mean, the video stayed in my memory. Like, that's just part of it. So to me, seeing that was just so dope. And, and that whole experience, shout out to Moni Love, who still looks like Moni Love did back then. It's amazing. You know what I mean? Um, seeing that in Latifah, that was a major influence to me as well growing up. I mean, it wasn't just... It's interesting. I mean, we make that dissection now in like female MCs and male MCs. And obviously there's that distinction because we're different just on an anatomical level, right? Um, but at the same time, when you think about the fabric of music, I feel like it was across the board. I, I, as I think about Light, I think about Kane. I think about Special Ed. I think about EPMD. Like I, there was no real distinction. It was just all really dope to me. You know what I mean? It was just, now for whatever reason and we we categorize things right but but i i mean first of all there is no distinction to me because it just it's, it's as i talked to a bunch of people about this you're not playing sports right <laughs> this is just this isn't football this isn't you not gotta be seven foot six this is that's real this is just you know some, some regular shit so mm -hmm. there's never been a distinction for me and i meant to say it earlier it's like as far as i'm concerned when i do these types when i do lists and talk about mcs like to me, you're one of the nicest because you're one of the nicest. Like, like I fuck a gender. That. that doesn't make any sense, man. Like, that shit's always been. Cats will ask, yo, who's your favorite female MC? I'm like, I don't have one because whoever's nice. nice is nice, man. So I appreciate that. I was having that conversation with Breezy the other day. Shout out to Elder Sensei. Um, <laughs> you know, so Good yeah, help. man. Um, literally, Breezy and I were talking. I was playing him some new stuff off of the project, which he's also on the new project. And um, he was like, Yo, man, I can't wait for people to hear this because it ain't even about the di distinction of female or male. Like, yo, you an ill-ass MC. I just want people to really hear that this time around, you know? Yo, I, I, I listen, I, I feel like you, we can talk about that right now because I feel like you go for the jugular. So I can hear like a breeze influence there, of course. Yeah. But it's like, but then there's like, then you come in, I feel like, damn, she was trying to take motherfuckers heads off. Like, <laughs> Like, like and, and so what's the kind of what's the body behind your style? Like, what's as far as where that came from? Because I feel some like crazy energy when you spit, man. Like, I you appreciate this. that. Yeah. <laughs> For real, man. Like, this. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. We have this conversation, too, because, you know, and a lot of people, obviously, you know, but a lot of people for mad years didn't realize that, you know, my brothers are my actual brothers. Like, right. those are my brothers, you know? Right. Not like, yo, my brother, like, those are my blood brothers. So, you know, family, like, change pampers type brothers uh, situations. Them with me, because I'm the youngest. But um, 
It's funny. I think that there's certainly a breeze influence. I've I've ne- I've definitely heard that, and that's a major compliment. Obviously, to me, he's a fucking scientific genius when it comes to this. You know, yeah. he's just crazy. He's, he's a mad scientist. Over there. Yeah, he's <laughs> crazy. He's he's what you say? Insane. Right. He's just <laughs> freaking nuts. Um, and then you know, Slim is crazy too because it's funny. You know, um he'll get on stage and people are like, yo, his presence is, I never knew he was like that. Like he'll tear off somebody's head on stage too. And so I think that being exposed to that and being influenced by that, both lyrically, um, presence wise production, and also just from a family standpoint, it's like osmosis. You can't help but kind of take on some of that because that's your environment. So um, I think stylistically, there is a sense of both of them. You know what I mean? Breeze is real calculated, straight Ginsu knife. You know, Kev is more like atomic bomb, like like straight missile. And, you know, I'm probably, I don't know, AR, what is it? AR-15, I'm in AR-15. between. Like, no silencer, but you're definitely going to catch just it. Just so. spraying them. Like, just, just spraying them. It's anybody like, can get it. Innocent bystanders, whoever. Like, <laughs> get in the bathtub, whatever. Right, right. So I think it's a combination of both for all of those reasons, you know. Yeah. Right. No, I hear you. So as far as that, you know, and and I have to address it because I don't have a lot of female MCs on my show. I'd love to. Sure. I mean, yeah. Like, but I, I don't. And yeah. Do you feel like you had to like maybe subconsciously or even deliberately show and prove extra? I mean, like 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 the fat beast. Oh yeah. Most like the fat beast cipher that, that that I posted the other day. You know what I'm saying? You there, like, with some heavy hitters, like, spitters, you know what I mean? And you were right. probably one of the younger ones, I think, right? I mean, as far Oh, yeah. As- yeah. Younger, I mean, gender, all of that. Um, but absolutely, you know, again, it comes from... So, in the family dynamic, I'm the only female. I'm the only woman. I'm the only girl growing up. That's what it was. And so, um, all brothers. And so, that in itself, you take away hip-hop and lyricism, that in itself is going to be a very interesting dynamic. Right. Um, and so I come from a world where it's like, you either go hard or go home. Like there's no in between. I remember being like initially really young and writing and, and Kev like, yo, I literally remember him saying, yo, if you can't rhyme at whatever tempo, then you are not ready. You know what I mean? And so you think about training and if you practicing for the NFL or whatever it is, NBA, like there's going to be cer- certain suicide missions. You're going to have to train. You're going to have to do certain amount of reps. And there wasn't no different distinction when it came to hip hop and rhyming and lyricism. It was like, yo, if you on some weak shit, you're not ready for this. So it was like, you're going to get prepared. You're going to sharpen your sword. And then we'll see. <laughs> and then we'll see. It wasn't even like automatic. And so some of that time was spent writing, but then some of that time was also spent, you know, outside of that. You know, Breeze will tell the story where it's like, yo, I remember hearing about my sister rhyming at Sweet Sixteens and different parties and stuff like that outside of just Juggernaut. So, I mean, I wrote, I practiced it, you know, and I still continue to do that. I feel that that's artists are supposed to do that. You don't get to a certain level plateau and be like, oh, I'm good. You continue to evolve. You continue to work on your craft. But I've definitely put in the time and I'm continuing to, to, do, to do that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always curious to see where this is going to go uh, lyrically and artistically, you know, just as an artist. So, yeah, I've put in the work, but I don't come from that place where it's like, oh, yeah, she can rhyme. She pretty. Yeah, let's put her on now. Yeah, because, I mean, let's keep it 100. There's, there's, there's women that get props for being dope and they're not necessarily dope. But they're attractive. I mean, and that's what it is. And it's like that's part huh. of it. Like, and yeah. like you ain't nice like that. And that's I mean, it's okay. But it's like, why? Let's. It to me, it's just yo. Again, it's not sports, right? So it's like right. this should be. I don't even think it should be a category. Like this is like yo, especially from our shit. You come, this shit comes from the mud. So it's like, mm. you about it or you not. Like female. Like I mean, I can think of look you, Bahamadia, Jean Grey. I yeah. Mean, Ty Finn. Come on, man. But that's the family, though. 
So when we talk about this narrative and this conversation and we look back at the footage for those who really know and understand, we talking about shows with Jean Grey. We talking about shows with Ty Phoenix. Ty Phoenix, that's fam. Like if you look on the gram, you'd be like, oh, I'm like, yo, what up, sis, man? No love. Like, you know, we got collaborative stuff together. We respect each other just for the craft and what it is. And honestly, that conversation is a double-edged sword at the end of the day, because it's like there shouldn't be that expectation or you got to look a certain way in order to be accepted, you know? But it can go both ways, you know? But there is that pressure to kind of appear a certain way. But then the flip to that, which is what you're saying, is you could look good and then all of a sudden you get trumped for the lyricism and the, and the skill aspect because you do. So it goes both ways, you know, where that whole stigma standard, it should be about the craft and skills regardless. But, you know, we all know that sex sells and how you look matters and right. all that shit is relative. But at the end of the day, the root of what it is should be lyricism. And you're right. There are a lot of uh, women out here who are artists and who are raw. They're cold. And because they're not presented in a certain way visually to deal with someone else's aesthetic pleasure, then they overlooked. And that's some bullshit. Cause at the end of the day, it should be about the music. It should be about the craft. Right. The one thing I like about, about your music. And I was telling my lady this, I was like, yo, I was like, she's still a girl though. You know what <laughs> I mean? I was like, you know, she will take your head off like <laughs> nicely and like smile at you about it. But like, meanwhile, you're just sitting there like, Oh, fucked up. So, that, There's Ty Phoenix right there. Big out, big out Ty Phoenix. So that's what yes. I, I, I appreciate about like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, I don't sense that you're trying to be something different or what, like you're a woman. And, I you know appreciate that. I definitely made sure I had all my cute earrings and my, my lipstick. I was definitely very cognizant of that, <laughs> that I'm still a woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is part of what it is. And I think that that's something that's a beautiful thing to embrace. It's just part of who you are. You shouldn't have to put that by the wayside, you know, yeah. but I will, I will come for you though. Yeah. There's that <laughs> part too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and honestly, man, I, I salute, and this is, you know, obviously hip hop is the most, one of the most male dominated arenas around. I mean, like by, by far. So like, you know, any woman in this, whether it's on the industry side, whatever, like, you know, is, is, is scratching and clawing as, as far as like to, you know, show that it's it's about the craft. And, and so, you know, salute, man, because I, I just, I, I wouldn't want to do it. And I just, so, I mean, I don't, I can't say I understand, but, right. but I, I appreciate the fact that um, all of you guys have like, you know, stick, sticking with this shit, even though it's, you know, probably can be kind it's of It's a calling, a though. That's the, that's the wild thing, is that I'll have moments in Illogy throwing out them Scorpio saying that's part of it. Yeah, that's part of this thing, too. Shout out to my fellow Scorpio. That's part of it, too. Um, I believe, though, um, at night, it's going to haunt you. If you're an artist and you love this, like, you do what you do. I mean, this is who we are. So... You could go to bed and act like, all right, I'm good. Let me throw on Netflix. And then you're going to be thinking like, yo, who am I interview next? Yo, that joint was dope. Like, I'm thinking what rhyme I'm going I'm, I'm to work on next. Like, even if you lay dormant with it for a minute, which is kind of what this project is about, eventually that shit going to come find you because this is who you are. You know what I mean? It's just a part of who you are. So at the end of the day, it's like, it's natural. It's natural. What's unnatural is to not do this. What's unnatural is to not think about this. That's that's faking the funk. That's 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 that whole thing. If you're not doing it or not thinking about it, doesn't mean you have to materialize something at the time, but you're gonna think about it. That's right. just the eyes of an artist. That's what we do. Right, right. As long as, I mean that's the thing, you're going against your nature if you do otherwise. I mean Correct. Like that's if what what whatever it is, if it's like art, it's like if you know what it is that you're supposed to be doing. And you go against that, you will always be unhappy. I mean, as far as I agree, as and that's with any, and that's with anything in life. Whether we talking about art, music, uh, relationship, make a left down the road, you know that that instinctual calling to do what you need to do, it's just a part of who we are. And the more we can follow that, is the more that I think we find some real gems in whatever it is, whatever Word. it is we're doing. Word, yo, take us through the um, as far as I want to know your experience with the. Uh, the Prince Among Thieves joint, as far yeah. as because so I like first of all, it's a classic album. Big up Breeze, um, shout out Breeze. You know what I'm saying? We had a, we did a couple couple uh, bills together. So yeah, that joint was like with him that that back and forth and everything. So take us through like 
just behind the whole energy behind that. I mean, as far as yeah. getting on there and all that. For sure. I mean, again, I was I was super young with that project. I think for me, the Prince Among Thieves, shout out to Prince Paul and everyone who was part of that project. Obviously, Breeze, a.k.a. Tariq, right now in the building. Um, uh, I feel like it was eye-opening and inspiring for me to see Breeze in that context. And I'm going to say that the focus more so on him in the sense of as an artist, when you think about ways that you want to improve, right, there should be something that you aspire to or some kind of influence or inspiration. And I never forget when I seen Breeze record Pain, which is one of my favorite songs. And yes, on that project. And although I was part of it, um, he went from just doing something lyrically as a lyricist to an actor in the sense of he really embodied the character because it was like it was a character he was playing and i found a real gem in that okay you could write rhymes but now if you want to really encapsulate who this character is that you're becoming you have to bring it to a whole nother level where you live it you you are that and i remember this dude spitting his verse and literally falling on the floor like he had gotten shot because he gets shot in pain, right, at the end. Right. And I swear it blew my mind because it went from something two-dimensional to something on some ether shit, not to be corny, but a real talk. It's like, it's like, okay, I don't know why my, my shit keeps coming back to something physical and sexual and shit, but it's like sex versus fucking love love making and shit it's like you could do some shit shit is i think it's physical it's cool like you got your nut but at the end of the day was it like fucking jaw dropping was it something magical and i feel like as artists you want to tap into something that's special because at the end of, end of the day anybody could write rhymes but is your cadence something that goes you get chills and goosebumps and i just saw him do something that took it to a whole nother level and it let me know that okay you still you have a lot more room to grow that's what i'm saying like he kind of was like okay you thought this was the ceiling because you could write rhymes you could do me metaphors and similes you got to break through that ceiling and go to a whole nother level with it um and i think about actors like denzel washington like to me he's one of my favorite actors ever you Easy. know even tom hanks you know what i'm saying even will smith as i see him he reminds me of like a younger you know denzel but, but that's the point you can act you can study a script, but can you touch somebody's emotion? Right. And that project, Prince Among Thieves, let me know, like, okay, you need to be able to transcend beyond just words. You need to be able to do something totally different with this. And there's a whole nother level of expansion here on an artistic level. And so for me, I was happy and proud to be proud of, part of the project, but it was more of what I learned from it, where I can go personally, you know? Right. No, that, and it was dope because... When I hear that, that track with you, too, I mean, the whole thing is, like, I feel like I'm right in this cat's life, you know what I mean? Like, just, like, yeah. right there with the popcorn. I mean, so even that, like, that back and forth, I mean, that was, like, that brought back some memories of some relationships that I had and, and hearing sure. certain things, and I'm like, damn, like, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it, it it was powerful, man, and that, that track, well, that whole album in general, but um, was... It showed us, like, yeah, like you said, you can take this to another, another level. And Absolutely. Really, you know, because everybody knows a Tariq or, 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 you know what I'm saying? Every, everybody can probably relate to somebody in that thing, right? You, Absolutely. You knew, a, you knew a gun dealer or something, like, you knew Mr. Large, you knew some, everybody can, you know, a, a cop, right? So. <laughs> yeah, and I think it helped people also who didn't know that we were related. There was like some weird shit where they were like, oh, wasn't he playing his girlfriend? And I'm like, I was playing a check. <laughs> I was like, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Prince Paul. You know what I'm saying? For this lovely opportunity and for getting, a, a, you know, it was so cool to see at that point from like a major label and a check like that for me. Again, it was like surreal in that regard. So people didn't realize, a lot of people didn't realize, oh, that's her brother? Yeah. At that point, it was still yeah. very early, especially in my career, they were still like, who is this person? Um, and so, you know, on so many levels, man, I'm grateful for that project and what, and what it did, not just for um, obviously my brother, but just to be part of it 
is is a major is a major experience. It was a major experience. Yeah. I mean, I thought when I found out that you know that you guys were related. I mean, I, to me, that made it even. I don't know. That showed that you how talented you guys really are to me, as far as Thank like being you. able to to go into that realm and sell it the way you did. You sold it. So I mean, like right. You, That's what I thought. Know, <laughs> Fuck it. I mean, right, right. Nah, but it was a really dope experience, man. How could you not be totally smitten and humbled by something like that? I mean, straight heavy hitters on that project, man. Oh, I mean, of course. I mean, like you. That, that's 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 the thing. Like, there's certain things, right? Where like, I mean, the joint, the debut album, that thing. Like, you have your like, you know, your etched in history, and I I think there's certain things that are great. Where it's like, yo, this is. Yeah, like, I mean, not that you, if you were to stop today, but it's like, oh, I, I made a mark in this, you know? And I, to me, I think that's dope, because I could, you can, you can look on the timeline and be like, yeah, she, she was catching bodies on, on, on this. And, and so I, I think that's, I think it's dope. I mean, it was a dope, really dope project. And, and Prince Paul, what can you say about him? I mean, as far as, you know, his, his, his skill set, you know? I so, mean, history, history. The other day, Paul posted it. I think it was a recent... Uh, anniversary of it. Um, Breeze would know better than me. I don't know if it was like 25 years, something crazy like that. Um, and I was just like, wow, humbled to have been part of it. And he shouted me out like, yeah, it, hey, thanks, heroin, or something like that. It was great having you on it, whatever. And I was just still smitten 25 years later, you know, straight fan and still. I mean, you know, that's history right there. When you talk about hip hop and the foundation and that fabric, we're talking about people who were doing those initial stitches. Breeze said 23. Oh, Lord, 23. That's Breeze's birthday, too. He got a project coming out. Let me plug my brother real quick. Oh, what up? Shout out to Breeze Brewing. Yeah, Juggernauts. Yeah, he got a joint coming out. He's the 23rd of August. So y'all going to see right. some things coming out in August. Absolutely. Right. Get ready. Right. He hitting them back to back. No, yeah, I was banging the, um, yeah, the last joint. The last project was was dope. That's Crazy. Our papa is like, get me hype. Like, I'm I'm ready to to do cartwheels and shit and I would definitely dislocate something if I did but yeah I love iPod but that's my joint that's my joint yo so how, how'd you um I just found out I ain't go for I found out today mm -hmm. that you're a teacher too right we all we all teachers man I, 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 I knew I knew Breeze was I, and I, I I found so yeah man we're all friggin' teachers. It's it's insane. I mean, I mean, not just MCs and in a family group together. We're all educators. Yeah, and I've been for years. That's for crazy. Years what, and years. So what do, you, what do you teach? I teach visual arts. I'm oh, an what? art teacher. Yeah, man. I got the chillins. I got the little ones. I teach pre-K to seventh grade in Mount Vernon currently. New gig. I was teaching at Monroe College for a minute. Miss my Monroe kids. I taught in Chicago for years. Um, a couple years in the Bronx. You said pre-K to what? Grade seven. Oh, so you go you go to different you go into different schools? Oh no, it's one school. It's one school. Oh, I got you, all teach, the babies. You, you teach them all. Teach them I all. I teach them all, all except eighth grade. But I've taught in Chicago. I taught K through twelve. I taught college. Like we've been teaching for years. Yeah. Damn. So what's what's that been like for you though? I mean, as far as like, how has that affected your 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 career adversely or you know positively yeah adversely? that's a good word i'm glad you said adversely because um you know in some ways in many ways i think it's been a major blessing to all of us in the sense of um consistency um uh, we all have children and so it's been able to provide a sense of stability um you know a actual career and profession that gives back you know what i'm saying so there's something very special in that um, but the flip side to that is that, you know, it's extremely demanding. You know, instead of writing rhymes, I'm writing lesson plans most nights. Um, you know, I think where I'm at at this stage in the game is I'm trying to find ways that I can fuse it, where I can incorporate it. You know, I just had an observation the other day and I was teaching the kids about surreal art, which is like the dream state of art, like dream art. And I pulled on um, Biggie. It was all a dream. And one of my students, a female student, too, she's like, yo, I used to read Word Up magazine. Like, she knew the lyrics. This is seventh grade. She wasn't even born yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, she wasn't even born yet. And my and my principal was like, yo, that lesson was crazy. Like, there's rumors right now. Like, yo, people talking about your lesson. Because 
there's a sense of connection to culture. Um, you know, the most of the kids there, inner city kids, you know, as far as within that area. And so it's like, yo, you. Ha I feel like being an educator who's an MC, who's part of what we do, and that goes for me, that goes for Breeze, that goes for Kev, that goes for anybody, because there's so many educators who are also either hip hop artists in some capacities or some capacity, or definitely this is our culture and our era, right? right? And so our ability to communicate, to connect with them is something that we didn't have growing up. I can't think back and be like, word, my second grade teacher knew X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? Whereas now I can have students, um, even the other day as I'm the shy for a second and um, one of the dudes I was talking to in the Uber was like, yo, you should do a joint on drill drill artists from out here and I was like you know what I should do it and connect it to school drills and I hit that shit in September with school drills and then drill joint with music you know what I'm saying so to be able to make that correlation and assimilate things for them so that they comprehend it is something so special and that's a big part of what's mission missing in education is that they're not connecting with the kids I could walk in, my, I, I look crazy sometimes. I'd be like, yo, fall back. You coming like, you coming at me a certain way. I need, I need you to be respectful. A lot of the teachers not talking up like that. And I'm not saying that's the way to do it, but certainly that's the way that they understand. And so um, it's a blessing that we're able to connect authentically. It's a blessing that it's held us down in a sense that provides a sense of stability for us and something within the community. Um, but at the same time, the trade-off is I look at a lot of the people when I think back to those eras when we were doing wetland shows, tramps, like, I'm, you know, not to shout out names, but fam who has excelled in a different way musically because they didn't have this career, right? This takes real dedication. This is not something that you half-ass. This is not something that you have do. You wholeheartedly do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Breeze's Joint Taking Notes talks all about that, right? And so it's funny because there's a whole community and there's a whole movement now about hip-hop and education, not just with curriculum building and things like that, but also just um, MCs in the classroom. And so what ha what's happening now is people are making a parallel like, yo, you have to freestyle sometimes when you're on stage. You have to have a certain level of stage performance. You have to connect. These are the same attributes that happen in a classroom. You have to connect. You may plan a lesson, that shit goes left, and then you have to freestyle. You may have to improvise. A kid comes in, they hungry, they didn't eat, or they on some stuff, or they off their meds, or whatever it is. And so you have to figure out a way, how do I still connect with them while tending to everyone else and keeping them engaged? There's so many similarities that, Unless you have done the two, you really don't see the correlation unless you come to a, you know, carrying the culture IG live and then you're like, word, that I could see that. You know what I'm saying? I could see how there's a parallel there directly. So, again, there's, there's a beautiful part to what this is and what we do and the longevity. Instead of having fans, we have fans in the classroom who have been inspired and will take that to levels that you don't know. I still have kids from Chicago who call me. Or text me like, yo, Smith, that's crazy. I miss you, da-da-da. One of my students from Monroe, she's from the island. She's like, yo, I miss you. Just random hit me up. So it's like when you think about the influence of a student versus a fan, what's really the difference other than maybe you changing the trajectory of someone's life because of their perspective, but it, it happens either way. So instead of being on stage, we just in the classroom. You know what I mean? But because yeah. of our skills and our skill set, we're able to connect even lyrically. My kids be like, yo, you mad quick with it. They don't know. The, the, where I'm at now, they don't know I'm a lyricist. Oh. In Chicago, they knew. Like, it takes a minute. I don't just hit them with that. Yeah, right, right. But they be like, yo, you quick with it. And I'm like, you have no idea. The other day, I freestyled with, like, my second grade class because they was banging on the table. And they were like, yo, she wow. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Nice. So the relationship is there. There's not that much of a difference other than you go from maybe stardom or, you know, higher stardom in an underground world or perhaps a mainstream world versus, versus don't nobody really know you, but at the end of the day, you're still inspiring. And so, you know, what you going to say, damn, I wish I had a Grammy or I wish I had a student who was like, word, I made the honor roll. At this point of our life, it's like, you know, success is success. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. No, of course. I mean, to me, you're doing real work. I, I, I For me, even personally on my page, I'm more happy if I do like a quote unquote self-help post or like an inspiring post or whatever. I mean, who am I to inspire anybody, but something 
keep your head up post and that right. does well over some rap shit man like right. it's bigger than rap it's bigger than music and so you know salute i mean it's, it's working with the kids is great i mean I, it's something that i've done as well and it's <laughs> it's so rewarding man you know what i mean it, it's it's um because you can see it like you can see when you're affecting the kid like kids not eating at home or whatever and, and that's real you know, stuff that's real shit like people family members caregivers still in their bus passes subway passes and whatnot so that stuff is going on so what you're doing is critical i mean salute and it needs to be more people doing that it's a thankless you know we know what the pace feels like <laughs> yeah. right listen we ain't balling out of control for sure ain't none of that going on but Honestly, it sounds corny, and trust me, there's days I wish I could avoid a straight, yo, let me go to Kirk's, uh, what is it, Turks and Caicos, I almost called it Kirk's and Caicos, you know my fuck can't afford it when she's messing up the name and stuff, but you know what I mean, it's like at the end of the day, yo, when I have a kid come up and they really feel happy and good, I, I mean, it's priceless though, but don't get it twisted, there'd be days I'd be like, damn. Had I written enough rhymes, perhaps, perhaps, right, <laughs> perhaps, right. perhaps, perhaps I could have just bought the baby some books and book bags. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. Now, I love you. Get a coat drive or some shit, right? Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, I right. You. I feel you. Get them some crayons that's with the sharpie. Right, the phonetic back. awareness in a different way. Buy my album. <laughs> nah, but it's cool, man. They're so sweet. They good kids. No, that, that's dope. And I mean, again, every day isn't isn't perfect, but but um. You're definitely doing some some real work, all, all of you, and it's 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 important to salute, man, because it's it's sometimes it's not a, you know, you're not getting thanked. I mean, sometimes you know, and so it, it, it's it's critical. So I thank you sincerely for doing Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Because we we that. we need that. I mean, all all that money that oh, never mind. Are we giving to other places. We'd be here at twelve o'clock. I'm telling you. See, and this is why this is a dope conversation because I'm telling you, once you start having it and really digging into it you realize just how many layers there are there, there there that it really exist in this topic you right. really you really understand how many layers i mean i've had situations where it's like yo you can't let the kids listen to music and i've had to be like okay well if i get in trouble i get in trouble because i'm like yo you want to listen to x y and z all right are you working so i mean there there are parts where you might have to bend things a little bit so sure. that productivity is happening because we all learn differently you know what i'm saying right right it's about connecting like you gotta meet them halfway i mean right like, it, it can't just be some like oh this is how we're gonna do shit because that's not you know like, not you gotta meet them halfway so it's it, that's important as, as well like you said like mm -hmm. oh this kid who cares if he got his earbuds in or whatever if he's getting his shit shit going yeah. for real got in trouble Bree, Bree seems like a sneaky a dude that's like I can. Breeze is Breeze a dude that's like doing shit on the sly and then like not not getting in trouble. Yo, for honestly, else trouble for the wild thing is that people know us mostly in the capacity of the music, but Breeze and and Slim they're amazing teachers. I mean, again, stylistically very very different. Very very different too. You know what I mean? In the classroom, Kev style teaching. Breeze is style teaching, my style teaching, very, very different, but all very effective. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, nah, I've heard stories. I remember being in the Bronx when I was teaching. My brothers taught at Sousa for many years on Baychester, and I taught there for a very short time. Um, and, <laughs> and when I was there, the kids was like, oh, that's your brother? They were like, which Smith? They were like, I don't like that one. <laughs> they was talking about Breeze. Because Breeze is really strict. You know what I'm saying? Kevin strict too, but in a different way. They was like, I don't like that, brother. He real strict. <laughs> uh... <laughs> but he's an amazing... Uh, again, he, it's just his style. He don't play. Breeze don't play. Kevin's more like, you know, he got 400 kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, loving, nurturing. Breeze is like... But again, everybody's style, completely different, but um, still Breeze extremely hard effective. Breeze Breeze like... Fuck it, what's the, um... Oh, the um, with the back? Shit. Yeah. You call me crazy, crazy Breeze, Joe. That yeah. That's Breeze, that's Breeze. That's all Joe right. all day. That's Joe all day, yeah. Oh, shit, with the megaphone and the baseball, the Louisville slugger. Most Damn. Damn. Most right. Damn. <laughs> Yo, so, uh, what about motherhood, man? I'm sure that's a thing that kind of affected things as well. I mean, how has that mm -hmm. impacted your whole, your whole situation? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, again, these are conversations that have just, I don't know, they've been popping up a lot more recently um, as the music has been popping up as well. And um, it's definitely an impact. I remember having an interview. There was an interview we did years ago. My daughter was like one, one and a half. And they were like, oh, you know, being a female, being a mother, do you think it affects, you know, your music? And at the time, so naive. I was like, no, no, it doesn't shit. Yes, it does. <laughs> Absolutely, it does. So, I mean, I've had studio nights many where my daughter was there literally on egg crates, you know, on the laptop while I'm in the booth. Um, there was the last show that we did at Southpaw. Um, pardon me, and BK, um, I was telling this story the other day. My daughter was fussing and she's never been that type of kid. Really good. She don't fuss. She don't really make no issues like that. But she was like, mommy, I don't want you to go. She was a baby. She was like two. And we brought it to Southpaw. We, br I br we brought it to the show. And Kev was like, <laughs> you know, six, four, holding my daughter. She was like two years old. And they were like, you can't come in here with a kid. And he was like, yeah, we coming in here. And sure enough, my daughter was in the back doing smoke drink. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? May, let me not say this. Are we live? We're live. It's recording. Anyway, whatever. There was, you know, okay. different things. Anyway, she was in the back. She was in the, she was safe. She was safe. She was in the back and we performed. And my, it's interesting because this makes me think about um, the political aspect of, of hip hop in the sense of, you know, if I was Diana Ross, if I was Sade, would you tell me that I couldn't bring my child backstage? So this makes me question now the political aspect of hip hop and um, the respect of, involved with this, right? So because of this culture, is it as respected as maybe some of the older school cultures of music? Because I don't see someone turning away Tina Turner saying, now you can't bring a kid backstage to perform if this is part of what it is that you do. This is your they knew you were They knew you were performing? Oh yeah, they knew we were oh, performing. So but that's yeah, what I mean, I'm saying. They were course. like, nah, you can't bring it in. And Kev was like, nah, we bringing it in. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was I mean, uh, clearly, you're, you're on point with that. I mean, clearly, and that's you can see it day to day. I mean, if you pay attention, uh, that, that hip hop doesn't get the respect that the same, that the other, you know, genres of music and, 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 and stuff get. No, not even close. And, and honestly, that's why what we were talking about before in regards to the connection between hip hop and education is so relevant. Because once you start seeing, oh, this is important to, to education, this is important towards forward movement and evolution and change, then I think there's a different respect factor that's now associated with it, right? Um, and so all of those parts of this, that's important. But at that time, yeah, they were like, no, nah, you can't bring it in. But who are you going to tell 664, 200 and whatever, like, no, nah, we coming through. And we did. And she was fine. We were fine. We did a great show, had a great show. She was cool. And we went back. So I'm sharing that to say that, you know, um, this is a lifestyle. This is a culture. This is a family. Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's a, I mean, it's, it's saying not to cut you off. No, it's, the biggest, it's the biggest thing there is. Mm -hmm. Whether you want to believe it or not. Absolutely. It, even in its more twisted forms. It's the I biggest agree. shit out there. Ever. Like, you're, Ever. You're, all, you got, all these governors and and judges and whoever these kids are listening to this shit this is what they everybody's listening to this absolutely so. this is what pushes us through this is marketing this is advertising this is campaigns this is everything so i think that there is a shift that's happening i just you know hope that it becomes more commonplace and i think i think it is for the bigger part because you're right this is this is what's connecting all of us so you know as far as you know being a mother it's definitely played a role both creatively things that i've written about and experientially, as far as having to have my daughter with me in these experiences and do what I need to do. And, and shout out to Lauren. Lauren stay bringing her kids on 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 stage. I mean, who going to tell her no? So, you know, yes. this is just part of who you who you are. And to have that limitation associated like you can't do that. That's interrupting me feeding my kids. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's like now you're messing with other aspects of motherhood and providing for my kids because shit, I need a check to buy them some day. Uh oh. Stop playing, you uh -oh. know, stop playing. But yeah, not nah, we need to normalize all of this because this is this is our life. This is our right. culture. This is what we do. Right. We're different than our 45 and up year old parents were. We are, we're different. Mm -hmm. Like, And I'm, I'm starting to realize that now, like, 
I, I don't look like my dad did at 40, 45. <laughs> this is true. I ain't rocking the same. I, I'm not into the same shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I move different. So we, our mm -hmm. shit is different. And so because we're the, we're the kind of like the first, we're like that generation is having the kids, right? So our kids are coming up. So it, yeah. well, that's, and this for ain't sure. going nowhere. For sure. <laughs> My mom was not rocking bamboo earrings. <laughs> At this age, you know, but it's it's a beautiful thing. Again, it goes back to the connection. You know, I listen to, um, you know, I'm a, a definite fan of Cole, of J. Cole, and me and my daughter, both my daughter and I, she loves Cole. And so we'll listen and analyze things lyrically. You know, um, it's a place of connection. It's a place mm -hmm. of, of growth together. And, and what's better than that, man? Right. Yo, what's your state of the union of hip hop? rap shit right now your your take on the whole thing um good bad the ugly you know i'm gonna be the optimist in this sense um and maybe that's just because i'm working <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna be the optimist in this sense and maybe that's because i I'm got my working. check you know not even not even i say that no. in the sense that um you know, I was talking to Breeze. Matter of fact, I think it was this morning or yesterday. Um, I sent him, you know, the Georgia Ann Modro and the Elzai project. He actually was the one who like hit me to it, like, yo, this is happening. And then I saw her promoting it. And um, what I've heard so far, really dope. So I'm, I'm saying this to say that I think it's just accessibility. I think it's visibility. It's not that they're isn't amazing music out there it's just who's hearing it how is it being promoted it's not mainstream so you have to dig you got to dig for the gems you got to dig for the diamonds and um that's just what it is so i think that the music is out there is there a lot of stuff that's trash sure you know is there a lot of stuff that's straight treasure yeah i just think that because of technology and social media which is a beautiful thing it's allowing us to you know, converse now and sharing these 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 conversations. But you know, at the end of the day, you gotta dig. It's like going in anyone who's a beat maker, maybe they don't do it the same now. I don't know. But you know, you go in and you digging through the crates. You're gonna find a crazy ass, you know, maybe a little snippet or something that you want to sample and it becomes an amazing song. So it's not that the music wasn't there. It's not that the gems weren't there. You kind of just had to do a little bit of uh research. So it comes it comes down to you know, you're going to be lazy or not. So, you know, artists are steady out there. And I think we're having really dope conversations like this. It's just not as mainstream. And that sucks. I'm not going to lie. So I wish it could be, yo, let me turn on the radio station and it's there versus go online or go to Sirius, whatever. I don't really even listen to that, but you know, too much. But, you know, my point is the accessibility is different, not the availability. It's out there. It's just maybe not accessible the way that we used to be able to turn on Kiss, you know what I'm saying, and hear something dope or BLS or whatever, you know, um, it's just different. So you got to access a little bit. The access point is different. But I feel like that's with everything, man, at the oh, end of, of the day. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to walk out and... You know, you got McDonald's, you got a lot of bullshit. And then you got to look like, oh, word, where's that joint that got the dope hummus and, and you know, whatever. Where's that halal spot? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, it just is what it is. There's always going to be some nonsense somewhere. It's, it's up to the person and what their particular interest is to seek out and find something something unique and good. So it ain't that it ain't out there. I think more of us are making this this good music is just accessing it. Yeah, no, facts. I mean, it's it's a different time. We got lucky. I mean, when we could turn on Arsenio Hall. And Hell album, yeah. You know, turn on In Living Color, Cosby Show, whatever yep. it was. And this was this was what we were, we were spoon-fed. This like this is what we saw coming up. Correct. And so, thank God for that. Because because of us having it in that accessibility, at least our children or whoever is inspired and they're products of that, right? So now it's like, oh, well, let me create some dope stuff because my mom put me on it at or my dad or my uncle or whatever it is. So there's the inspiration there because at least that's there's the awareness. But we got it direct. So they may have to go a little bit of a different route. Um, but it's out there. The question, again, it comes down to how do we make this more accessible so people are seeing it on an everyday basis? To me, that's what it's really about because ain't everybody going to dig. You know what I'm saying? Kids don't even want to read these days. <laughs> Ain't everybody going to dig. But they it's don't even read a fucking caption. 
Like, so people, Where? grown adults do not read captions. So I get it. <laughs> like, real. Before we get on out of here, talk, talk a little bit about the anger track, man. That, that hit me, like, hard because I, I struggle with that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your comment one day. Clearly, so do I. Um, you know what? I, I, it was a track that I heard. Um, shout out to Solitaire, Chicago family, um, producer out there, engineer out there. And I have built that relationship through a um, very significant person in my life as well who put me on him in a studio out there. And um, the track, I was actually looking for instrumentals because I was, I've been exploring like some documentary stuff, for, which I got to get back to. Um, I had done this joint called The Process Sessions that actually Breeze was on the first one talking about like just his approach to rhyming and things like that. But anyway, um, there was an instrumental that he sent to me because I was looking for stuff in between type music. And this one joint was the anger track. And I was like, yo, this track is amazing. I have not been inspired to write. Let me just put it to the side. And um, I hadn't written really in about a year. I did some collaboration joints. Shout out to my brother, Tara Van Poole. Um, shout out to Newbie who was on here a little bit early. I'm not sure if she's still in the building. Um, but I heard the track and I said, let me put it to the side. And I would say maybe four to six months later, I went back and revisited it. And I think that for me, it was the first thing that I had heard that felt like something I wanted to do for me, for like a me project. Mm. And it just came really quickly. It was almost like creative constipation. Like I hadn't worked with anything or done anything for a minute. And so when I sat with it, it just really kind of just flowed and it came out. Rap and, X -Lex. Like. Yo, and, 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 and it just naturally felt like anger. It was just anger. It was a release. It was almost like angry that I hadn't done shit for a minute, angry at the things I was angry at about for how long, angry and wanting to not be angry anymore and work right. on things differently, right? And explore different emotions, angry that we in this pandemic shit for how long. It was just a buildup more so than anger was a buildup and just that frustration equated to anger. And so the song came. And from there, um, I had the concept of where I wanted the project to go. And I had a conversation, shout out to Pharaoh. He, he actually was like, yo, um, it would be dope if you, he was like, it reminds me of the Mary joint with, with Happy, like her old stuff. And he was like, I really like the song. What about if you explore different emotions and kind of went from like anger and kind of went to a space of maybe joy, happiness. Like there's, you talk about the narrative, that journey emotionally. And it kind of gave the project something solid as far as a ground to move from. And so this joint coming out with Breeze, uh, soon it's going to be gluttony. I have another joint. I, I mean, they're all related to emotional um, things rooted in different emotions. And I think that that's something that we need to talk about. You know, it's like, it's one thing to pop collars and this, this and that and talk about, you know, whatever, but you know, we grown too. And it's like, I want to have conversations about real things that sometimes we feel or experience, but maybe we don't feel comfortable discussing until we discuss them. Yeah. And then we normalize that. And that's important too. You know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that, especially with the pandemic. I think mad people dealing with mental health concerns, being isolated, not connecting to people and whatnot, you know, not having the conversation is not helping the top is not helping the situation. We need to, we need to tap in and, and explore those things and, and discuss those things so we can vent and be a supportive community, even if it's just that creative community for each other. No, well said, man. I mean, it's, it's a it's a dope track, and we're gonna play it before we get on out of here. So, cool, when's, cool. The, when's the project coming out with Breeze? Um, so the project with Breeze, well, that was well, really um another solo album. Breeze is on one of the songs. Oh, okay. So yeah, the, the 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 actual goal of this is is probably like early to mid June. Okay. Um, dope. and we like halfway, sixty, seventy percent of the way there. I think people gonna really love it. Some dope really humbling collabs i'm excited man honored excited grateful no i, I can't wait to i can't wait to hear it early i'm just hit, oh yeah yeah i'm gonna give you some sneak peeks i'm gonna give you some sneak peeks i'm gonna come back on and share them joints with you when the album drops oh let's 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 do it we're gonna get into this anger and yo it, it's funny real quick before we get into it you made a good point it's like we get angry about being angry 
Word. Like, but isn't that most fucked up shit? You mad that you mad, right? Like, like I'm tired fuck. of being mad. I'm tired. I saw a post one time and it was like something like, when you get tired of your own bullshit, oh, it's time. It's done. And sometimes we get to that point too, and it's like, right. you know what? Let's go on to another motion, man. Let's let's let this shit go. Right. Yeah, we should, and you know, we should always. I like getting to that point. Then you, because that's that's a really big moment of clarity, right? When you like, sure. damn, I'm so fucked up. I know I'm fucked up. Like, I, I, and not I'm enough people asshole. admit. Not enough people admit to that. To me, I feel like that's when the re real growth is happening. That's when the real... It, the people who scare me, nah, I'm good. Ain't shit wrong with me. Like, what you mean? Okay. Like, <laughs> right now. Like, how yep. you good? How you good? Word. And I got to join on the project called Denial. So it's like, you can act like it's all good, but you only hurt yourself in the long run. So we yeah. shall see. You know, hardly any of us are good. We can all say, COVID the fuck that hit touch everybody. Stop. Like, all this shit, man. So I don't want to hear that. Like, how you how you good, man? So yeah, that's the question. Word, you straight. I want to know what you what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Anger, Queen Heroin, Juggernauts, Boogie Down, Bronx. Carrying the, the culture, pen. baby. That's what we do. What? Yeah, let's let's get it. Uh, let's see. I, I always fuck up when I start. That's all right. You got getaway. Yeah. Shout out to Sin Q. Amazing right. producer who passed away this year. Much love, my brother. No mistakes ever. Watching the clock, no stopping the clock. Makeup. Time, lost times we fought, now it's vapor, dissipated. Mm -hmm. Hit the pavement on a new path, not sure if I can take it. The road long, not feel as strong as winding. If I get lost, Lord knows will someone find me. Blindside me, I wanna try me. In the garden, heart hardened like serpent, posing as servants. But if I purge vent, I'm vulnerable. And then you know my soul, it takes a toll, got me feeling old. Gray hair sprouting like tears dropping into crystal water pools. Sometimes it feels like time's a fucking ticking bomb. I sit back and think, what if I did this wrong? They got me wondering, no way to fix it all. Let it go, move on, I feel it all. Anger. Sometimes it feels like time's a fucking ticking bomb. I sit back and think, what if I did this wrong? They got me wondering, no way to fix it all. I get flagged a lot, so I can't play full joints really. So, <laughs> oh no, they, man! Listen, they, I'm grateful, they, man. They fuck with me. I'm um, happy to be on this platform with you. This is this is how we keep the conversation going, man. I'm grateful. No, thank you very much. It, it, the pleasure was mine. We're looking forward to this. I was excited. It was dope as I thought it would be, and, and we got we got to do it again. Yeah, let me know when the um. When yeah, joints. When you're ready to do that, we we'll try to promo, give it some legs, and do whatever. We're gonna we can do now. it. We're mm -hmm. gonna do it. I'm grateful to you. Thank you so much. Shout out to everyone who came through. Appreciate y'all. Salute to everybody that, that, that joined us. Sorry, we did not get to the um, to the questions or anything, but we'll get this up on the YouTube very soon. And uh, thank you. Let's we'll definitely do it again. Stay in touch, man. And uh, be safe. You already know. You already know, my brother. Be good. Peace. Thank you. Peace.